guys, what's going on? Cherry Slayer 27, and today we are on Forza Motorsport 6, driving that in the rain. <laughs> um, this is a drift, well, somewhat of a drift build. It's obviously already been built, and yeah, that's a big bitch. It, <laughs> it doesn't, um, doesn't want to slide. At least it didn't want to, but I'll be damned if I can't make it slide. Um, I want to talk about the paint scheme real quick. Uh, I am not condoning any kind of activity whatsoever here. This was made as a joke. Um, I don't want you to feel like I'm trying to pressure somebody into it or whatever. It's, it's strictly a joke. I made it because here where I live we have uh, like little moving vans and they're called U-Hauls. <clears throat> Sorry, U-Hauls. And uh, this is kind of a parody on it. And I've been promising this video for almost a week and I just haven't gotten around to doing it. Um, mainly because I had a, an idea that I wanted to do at the end of the video, which didn't hit me until last night. And I was like, yeah, I should probably put that on there before I upload it. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this video. It's, uh, raining here at Silverstone. And, you know, why not get this thing sideways just a little bit, if you know what I'm saying? And, <laughs> um, first of all, we're gonna do a couple of practice runs just around it couple of corners kind of get a feel for the uh, van and after that um, I'll go do a race and show you guys the replay all right so let's go to the racetrack um I got lost I don't know how I did that but I did try to go again and try to find it uh, obviously I'm kidding don't don't listen to that too too seriously um so yeah I just kind of want to see how the car handles first before I actually go out and try to get some decent lines going um mind you this is a big bitch Okay, so it, it, it's got a lot of weight to move. It weighs like, you know, like 4,500 pounds, I believe it said. Like 700 horsepower or something like that. That might sound like a lot of horsepower, but, but the power to weight uh, ratio is abysmal. So yeah, um, one thing I noticed through that corner is that it's got a shit ton of understeer. Which I expected that. Um, this bitch does not want to turn. I am definitely going to have to fix that. And... It also was really twitchy on the exit. Um, yeah, so I'm going to do what I can to fix that, but I want to give it another run around, kind of see how it handled again. It just doesn't want to turn, man. It either it gets really twitchy or it's really understeer on entry or exit. It just doesn't matter. It just, yeah, it depends on how the car feels and how much it likes you at that given moment in time. Uh, in, my, in my previous experience, it doesn't like me at all. I have built one of these before, uh, however I didn't build it for uh, drifting, it was built for uh, track racing, and it's kind of like the thing I go to when I go online B-Class just to piss people off, because I'm, I'm not good at this game, I'm decent enough to be competitive. Let's throw it in here again, see, see like, it, it's got potential, it stays well, at least once you get the mass leveled out, it, it, it stays fairly, uh, fairly level. And this just, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, and it still just it does not want to step, step out. So I think what I might do is park up here underneath this bridge, and, or whatever the hell you want to call that, and take some front camber out, add some more in the rear, and t definitely take some fucking caster out. That, that's, I know that's kind of blasphemic for me to say that, it's supposed to be maxed out, whatever. To each his own. I gotta take mine out. It, it, it's adding way too much understeer to the car. And I threw on some more toe out in the front also to give us more front end response. This should, if I did it correctly, if I did what I think I did to it, should make it a little bit more responsive in the center of the corner. Um, yeah, so we're, we're gonna do what we can until immediately it's an ass ton better. If you guys did not know, that is a measurement of awesomeness. It's on a scale of 1 to 5. I'll get into that in some other video. I'm not going to do it right now because I haven't thought of the entire scale yet. So, yeah. You guys put comments and come up with the scale for me because I'm, I'm a loser. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a hell of a lot better. It, it, I'm actually kind of blown away now as of this moment because it just handled that so well. You guys can't see but my brother is over here probably giving me shit and laughing at me. Um, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, yeah, it's a hell of a lot better. It's a lot more stable through um, the corner. And I'm also noticing that the weight transfer game is real. 
Like, I'm an emergency brake core. I love it. You know, show it some love. Love it whenever I get the chance to. This thing doesn't need it. It did it right there. It, it did need it right there. It, it didn't want to, um, it didn't want to step out. Which, you know, whatever. That's what it's there for. But, this, the way, the way that the uh, weight transfers, it, you don't need it. And just, it moves so much that it just, like, the suspension gets distorted enough that uh, it's able to slide, like, right there. Oh, nope, never mind. Nope. Nope. We're just gonna go over to the grass. It's fine. It's normal. You know, why not? Um, yeah. Remember that thing I said about it being better? I might have spoke a little bit too soon. Um, but I think it's good enough for, for what we're trying to uh, accomplish here. I think I'm going to do another, I don't know, one or two runs around here. And I'll just try to get more feel for it. Because after this, I'm going to go run three laps, full circuit of, of this circuit, of this version of Silverstone. And uh, so you guys can have a replay and kind of see what it looks like when it's... Um, going around the corner, the way the body is uh, shifting and all that cool cool nerdy shit that I like to do because I'm a loser. Um, yes, I should probably also tell you guys I had an idea um, a couple nights ago the night that I was actually going to put this up onto YouTube. I wanted to see how well this thing would go around the burger. Yeah. Um, that was interesting. I'll put that at the end of the clip too. That's part of the reason why this video is so long. It, it yeah, it was like an eight minute lap. Anyway, you'll see it. It's all right. I apologize for my shitty driving in advance. Um, yeah. So I think I'm gonna do one more run here. I'm um, just mainly because I want to fuck around some more. All right. So I was gonna do a couple more passes on that section that we were just at, but I decided against it. Um, I I felt. You know, fairly comfortable with the van, so I figured I'd just go right into this and get this up for you guys. Um, you guys might be wondering why I put the clip of the replay in it, and I actually have an answer for you. And I'm not gonna half ass. <laughs> um, I like to watch replays, I use them as a, a learning opportunity, kind of. You know, in real life, whenever you're actually inside of a car going around a racetrack or just driving around the street, you know, going to Walmart or whatever, you can feel everything that's happening, you know. You, you feel it in the seat, you feel it, you know, in, in your chest and all that shit. And whenever you're playing a, a video game, especially with the controller like, like I am, you don't feel anything. You just kind of have the visual cues that's going on. And whenever you drive first person like I do, it, it, there's not really much there, you know. We don't have the exterior view to see what's going on with the suspension or anything like that. So uh, I like to watch the replays because it gives me an opportunity to you know, see what is actually going on with the car. See, like, I, I didn't realize it was swaying that much. I knew it was swaying a lot. I didn't know it was swaying that much. Um, and there are many a times that I've gone through and watched, you know, watched replay and I was like, man, why the hell is my car driving like shit or, you know, whatever the hell it was that I was driving. I watch the replay and be like, oh, that's why, you know, that's, I don't know, you just use it as a learning, learning opportunity, and that's, that's why I like to watch replays. Also, I put this in here because I wanted to give you guys a chance to see what it looks like sliding. I, I love watching cars drift. It's my favorite thing in the world. Um, I've watched, I don't know, let's see, what was it, two days ago, I watched like four and a half hours worth of, uh, drifting documentaries, and... Some of them were in languages that I can't understand, but it's just watching the cars do their thing. That was really clean. Wow, that that was a that was a good entry. Oh yeah, you know, it's just watching these cars. I think it's, um, you know, it's an art form, and I feel like it's, you know, it's something that either you like it or you don't. For those of you that don't like it, you need to get to the doctor and get get checked out because something's not right upstairs. I'm just saying. Obviously, I'm, I'm kidding, you know, like what you like, whatever. Um, yeah, so, I do, I do do a little bit of both. I, I grip race and I drift. Most of the time I'm drifting, um, especially on Horizon 2. Um, however, on Forza 6, I find myself grip, grip driving a little bit more. I don't know why. Um, I just, I just do. Um, you guys will see a little bit of that here before too long. And, 
Uh, I you know, like I said, like I said previously, I'm gonna apologize for the really crappy driving. Um, but yeah, so no, I'm I'm a little bit of both. I do a little bit of both, I should say. So I, I you know, I'm not strictly a drifter. I'm not strictly a, a racer. I I do whatever the hell I want to. One thing I don't do, however, is drag racing. Um, I haven't quite figured out how to tune the transmission yet for a drag car properly. So I just, I'm, I'm slowly learning. Um, I just, but I don't do it enough really to retain everything else that I've learned. And that was such a clean section, man. Damn. I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed with this car, man. I, van. To Van, Jake. To Van. Yeah, thoroughly impressed, man. It, it, it does pretty well. And I meant to flip it for you guys, but I completely forgot. Alright, so that does it for the uh, the drifting of this thing. Um, you know, all in all, I'm, I was fairly impressed with it. Like I said, it, it's not worth going online and trying to be competitive with because you're not you're just not going to. Maybe if I put the NASCAR engine in it, it might be a little bit better. But I don't know the weight and just it's just not a good drift car. It, it's not something that I would much rather. Or it's not something that I would take online. I would much rather take on something like a 240 or an S13. Um, you know, to begin with, I had very low expectations. That, you know, it's ugly. This thing can't be a drift car, but that's what makes Forza fun. You know, you can do anything you want to with it. Or with these cars. And, you know, just go out and do whatever the hell you want to with it. And, huh, whenever I built this car, I... I was like, oh, you know, whatever. It's going to be really, you know, really, really crappy or whatever. But, you know, that's just, that's Forza. That's just kind of how Forza works. And I find myself that, you know, the cars that I think aren't going to do well actually end up surprising me in one way or another. And the cars that I think should do well are either too much to control or, you know, whatever. So, um, yeah, that's just kind of a little bit of a... Uh, brief on the drifting. However, now I think what we're going to do is go put some better tires on it, tune the suspension on a tiny bit, and come here, tune our burgering. <laughs> um, yeah, as you guys can see, I, I have no racing line, so if I go a little bit too deep into a corner, it's because I haven't quite gotten used to the car yet, like that. I completely missed the apex, and for some reason I went to second gear. I don't know why I did that, but I did. Um, again, no, I had no, no expectations for this thing around this track, and I kind of gave myself a target time of 10 minutes. Um, mind you, the, this thing is an A class, so it should technically easy, easily beat it. But I know the, the, this thing drives so horribly that I don't imagine that it'll be, it'll be a um, very, very quick around this racetrack. Um, yeah, so you know, we're getting up here to. Flu plots. That's what this little area of this track is. Track is called. It means flying place. Yeah, flying place. I'm looking at this diagram. I have a kind of like a carve out of the track sitting right above my TV, and it marks out all of those really specific corners. And it does not like this section whatsoever. It likes to get on two wheels here. Um, it was a lot more stable. I, I redid this like I don't know four or five times just because I couldn't get a clean run. And you have to go so slow through this section when compared to, you know, a lot of other A-class cars or, hell, B-C-class, you know? I, it's just, yeah, this thing is awful. This is not a good race car, which, well, at least with this current set, it's not, it's not a good race car. Like I said, my, my, my B-class one that I have, um, it's not going to be setting any lap records, but, it, you know, I finished top three pretty consistently in it. Uh, nailed that apex. Coming just now, exiting the foxhole. Sorry, this is a really treacherous part of the track. A lot of people under underestimate it. Um, it's I don't know it, the way that the ground move or not the ground. The ground's not moving, but the way that the track shifts has a lot of off camber um, corner entries, a lot of bumps, and it's really easy to upset the car. Same with this right here. You guys can see there's a little dip right there. If you guys don't get your braking point right, it's uh. Very difficult to get your car slowed down in time. Um, right now we're getting up to Bugvuck. I don't know what that translates to. I can't see the words on my 
Oh my, that's mine. That says mine. Like a coal mine. Um, I like to call this the sister section. Because there's a lot of corners that kind of mirror each other in this little, I don't know, two minute section. Um, it handled itself pretty well through here. I was really, really impressed. Um, again, you know, like I said, it's not it's not setting um, any any lap times, but you know it, it it's doing I think the best that this thing can do on this current with this current setup. Now, what I did do, I did throw on some better tires, um, messed around with my suspension a little bit, so you know it wasn't sliding all over the place, and I believe I might have lengthened my gears a tiny bit. Um, just to kind of, so it didn't top out at, you know, 160 or whatever, which I highly doubt is going to get going that fast anyway. Hell, it might. Shit, as I miss a gear. Wow. What the hell, man? And, you know, throw it in that corner. There's a little dip right there. You got to be really careful in this thing. Um, I like to go on the two wheels. And this corner also is really tough to get into. It's, technically, it's a double apex. It's got two different center points to it. But the way I take it, I try to just take it as, as, a, as a simple one apex corner. Um, also, this is probably the fastest part of the racetrack. And I kind of bitched out, <laughs> as you guys can see. Uh, uh, yeah, I didn't trust this car coming up through here. However, what I'm really interested in is to see how well it does around the carousel. A lot of cars... Whoa, way too sideways. Okay, thank you. Um, a lot of cars get really upset with the carousel. It's a really rough old section of the racetrack. Um, the, the part that you drive on, the little dip, is concrete from the 1930s. So it's really rough and murders tires. At least in, in real life. I don't, I don't know how that translates to Forza. Um, held the inside line really well there, you know. It, you know, if you get this thing slowed down enough, it does alright. And, oh yes, the carousel, let's kind of see what happens. Uh, alright. It's doing alright, and then I kind of completely balls it up, because I was looking at the timestamp at the top, trying to see how fast I was going. And I kind of exited a little bit, a little bit too, uh, too early. But you know what I did alright? You guys might have seen a little flash on the screen. It's because I had to try to splice up two different videos so you guys can get the entire lap. Um, so anyway, I hope it turned out alright. I did my best for you guys, so it doesn't look like, like it jumps too far. Uh, now this, this is my favorite part of the racetrack. Um, it's flowing, it's really easy to get the cars to... It's really easy to be fast here, but this right here especially is my favorite part. Probably of any racetrack, just these three corners. I don't know what it is about them, but I, I love them. Um, so yeah, you know, I was very happy that this thing was nice and composed through there. Um, I was kind of worried. Because uh, you use the cor the curbs there to get through the corner as straight as you can, and I was afraid that this car would like bounce up, you know, because the suspension is fairly stiff, and I didn't want it to you know pop onto two wheels or you know spit me around to the corner facing backwards, which happened four or five times before I finally got this run. It was so irritating, man. You know, I love this racetrack. I, I don't know, man. I. Remember, I was still playing like Gran Turismo 5 and Gran Turismo 6. I probably have hundreds of laps counted on this on this racetrack, so I know it really well. But the only thing that I have really to say that's kind of a bitch about it is it's so long. So when you fuck up, if you're like me, who wants you know who wants to get a decent lap for you guys so you guys can see it, um, you have to restart four or five fucking times before you're able to uh, before you're actually able to get a clean run. Um, so yeah, it was very, very stressful getting this, getting this thing around this racetrack. My, my previous transit, which I might not have specified earlier in this video, what, what this van was, it's, it's the transit. And here in America, they're not called transits, they're Ford E350s or 250s or something like that. At least from what I've, from what I've seen, I haven't seen a transit before. Um, so yeah, you know, getting up to the back, the chute is what this is called. This is called. Um, that's a really easy corner to mess up. You've got to get that corner dead on, so you can get a fast, fast exit onto the straight here. Uh, in a racing uh, situation, this is a very, very important part of the racetrack. That corner is because you know this is such a long straight. If you have a handling build like I do, 95% of the time, 
Um, if you can't if you can't get a good exit on that, you, you're going to be murdered, absolutely murdered down the front stretch, which 95% of the time you you are anyway, because people like to build power cars. You now whatever. If that's you, I'm sorry, but I I don't understand. I would much rather have a car that uh, handles nicely before I have one that goes 200 miles an hour. Um. Yeah. So closing up on this lap, closing up on the video. Um, I want to just thank you guys for watching, and if you liked it, slay the like button, and stay sideways and subscribe. Wow, that was really... Stay sideways and subscribe. There we go. <laughs> um, also, I'm on Twitter. Look me up, uh, CherrySlayer27, just like the YouTube channel, just like my Xbox Live. Send me a message on the Xbox, and we'll tandem sometime. I don't know, guys. Take it easy. I hope you enjoyed.